The Gulf of Maine, known for its blue-green waters, majestic whales, and tasty crustaceans, is home to nearly 4,000 named species, yet only a fraction of those are known to most of us. In 2002, the Gulf of Maine was chosen as the ecosystem project for the Global Census of Marine Life to help us understand the role that biodiversity plays in large marine ecosystems. Beneath the surface of this sea within a sea, a complex topography and variety of seafloor sediments offer a rich diversity of habitats. From the intertidal zone to the continental slope, the plants and animals that live in, on the bottom, and in the water column interact with their habitats and each other to form a productive functioning ecosystem. The Gulf of Maine is actually one of the best studied uh, regions in the world and so you would think well we need to we already know what we need to know in order to uh, manage it forever on a sustainable basis. Uh, the fact is that uh, the Gulf is always changing. Um, there are lots of organisms out there that we actually don't know very much about. We don't know how abundant they are, or how they're distributed, or how they function over time. Which ones change abundance and why? And, and why does their existence matter to the rest of the Gulf? Over long periods of time, uh, animal populations, plant populations change. And uh, without the biodiversity to support that change, uh, you're essentially cutting out uh, part, of the, um, part of the flexibility that the system has um, to, uh, to adapt to change over time, whether that's climate or other changes. The Gulf of Maine Area Census Program investigated many environments from the shore to depths of more than 3,000 meters. In Canada, one of the areas of research is known as the Discovery Corridor. So the estimates on species that are undescribed in the oceans, uh, some people think that it, it may be in excess of 99%. So in other words, we know a very small percentage of the biodiversity in the oceans have ever really been described by science. And so the Sloan Foundation, through the Census of Marine Life, is trying to improve on that situation. The Discovery Corridor fits well within this context, and it's a Canadian contribution, hopefully, to the census. And the idea here is that if you think about the fact that we know less than 1%, it seems like a very daunting problem. And so if we try to tackle everything at once, then it seems really overwhelming. So what we're trying to do here is to focus biodiversity research on one geographic region in order to try and improve on that 1% and really get a better handle on our understanding of biodiversity for at least that one geographic region of the world. I can do the same kind of work that I would do myself either uh, walking along a shore collecting individual organisms as I did as a child. I can do that now with these technologies in, in deep water environments. Another project in the U.S. is investigating factors that create biological hotspots. In this case, it's over a small underwater formation known as Platts Bank, where internal waves create unique conditions perfect for feeding humpback whales. This offshore bank is one of a network of sites that whales use as a part of their annual migration to the Gulf of Maine waters where they feed in the summer. And we're studying um, the frequency with which the bank turns on or off. You know, why is it a, a hot feeding environment and why is it not at other times? And the mechanisms that support that. It, it appears that the uh, patches of a krill and some other plankton that uh, really make it very attractive for feeding are the result of the interaction of uh, physical uh, properties within the water column. These are internal waves that are coming across the Gulf of Maine. When they uh, encounter the uh, bank, um, especially during periods of strong tidal flows, the uh, internal wave field shallows up closer to the surface and um, the birds take advantage of these patches visually. So when we first uh, proposed to go out to this bank, um, some people said, why would you go out to that bank? Uh, we don't know anything about it. And I said, precisely. It turns out um, that uh, the few people who did know about it um, were tuna fishermen because they've seen red water before and they know the whales are out there. When krill are abundant in the region and located over the thermocline, it seems to, to be a, a good feeding spot that may last for, for many weeks. It's nothing for a large uh, whale to cruise around the Gulf looking for food, and they know uh, what the sort of statistically 
good spots are and I think that they're checking them out frequently and if the um, feeding conditions are right they'll, they'll stay around. The majestic whales, the swarming krill, and the life-giving plankton of Platts Bank are just one chapter in the vast story of life in the world's oceans.